Hey y'all, this is Kevin. I'm the one who bought Ralph's board for 500 bucks because, well, he had to get surgery because he crashed and ate shit on this board because it cut out on him. So I bought his Cali and I bought his green machine, whatever the hell this thing's called, Momentum. Um, oh, it sheds. That's the filament stuff. Comes off all day long. Little bits and pieces. Here, here's some freshie for you. It's like, I probably pulled off probably 200 of these pieces. They always break from right here. Maybe he needs to figure that out. This wasn't aligned compared to this one. I know that makes no sense, but when looking from above, this one was off 3 16 this one was off a 16th, this was centered on a board, centered, centered, just fine. These are wood screws going straight into wood, which is cool and all, but yeah, not production value. This was uh, super glued, this was super glued. Which owner did that? I'm gonna say Ralph isn't a very talented guy with super glue. I don't think he did that, but who knows? We can't play the blame game. Belts love to rub on the inside of the tire. Motors are pulled down this way from torque. It has nothing to do with this rod being shorter. I added some hot glue right there just because I didn't want to see all thread. But this was shorter because at one point there was a stabilizer similar to what's on a 1980s to current sport bike. There was a stabilizer, I guess, went from here down to somewhere on the truck. Um, these trucks are already bent. They were bent. I weigh 250 pounds. They were bent well before I saw them. I don't know how they bent so soon. Using uh, set screws times two. Good little. Um, I'm assuming this isn't cut by hand. Whoever did this did a decent job. I'm, I'm, I like these. I don't know about these little 3D printed pieces. You need some cool special tool that he makes to print it out. And if you lose that tool, you're fucked. Uh, this is version two of the tray. It's super soft and really nice stuff. Uh, but the problem is it's held on with double-sided tape and a few wood screws. Um, this is carbon, looks good to the eye, inside's a little ugly looking, but all in all, really good fit and finish. Um, little brass uh, inserts, probably heated in with a soldering iron pushed in. Um, I move this back, this is usually flush with here. I move this back because I like the foot room, because I'm a big ass guy. But he had his wires way too long down here before. They were like seven inches obnoxiously long, so I moved those as well. Um, inside of here, the BMS and the soft start all fit good. Lots of hot glue. I don't really have an issue with that. I have an issue with these connection points, and I really have an issue with what's going on inside these batteries. We're using flexible braid soldered straight to the cells, which if you've ever opened up a lithium-ion cell, Imagine 35 millimeter film when you pull it out it unravels. Well You don't want to get that hot and there's a, a battery chemist will tell you, you know There's a reason why we don't solder straight to cells, but it degrades um, The partitions between the dielectrics and the battery cells more on that you will google it. I don't care um, There wasn't slop this morning now. There's a bunch of slop again I'll have to yeah, that's obscene right there. We're talking about a lot, a lot of slop. This morning I tightened them all up. I will do it again. Later. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll do it now. It's the same wrench I pulled out this morning. Yep, it's too tight. Yeah, there's still an obscene amount of slop, even though there's, there's none going this way or that way. None going this way or that way. Lots of slop. So I don't know if it's crappy bearings or that. Uh, 
just crappy eBay hubs, wheels, sorry. Fronts are bent, shedding, good loom job, that looks nice. Um, I found a big issue with the ESCs. So traditional ESCs, especially this uh, Flipski variant, will have 10 gauge wire going straight to a three set of caps. I think these are 65 volt caps, 63 uh, nano uh, microfarad. What are they? 680 microfarad, 63 volts rating. Um, they'll usually have three of these in parallel. This is from a Flipski. He just extended the wire with 16 gauge silicone wire. Um, not really the best when you need a sudden inrush of current when you hammer on the throttle and to clean up the noise. Um, I prefer to see what Flipski and the engineers designed is a shorter and thicker gauge wire. Um, this I pulled out. Thank God I had another one. This is a uh, Flipski 50 amp and the DRV was throwing errors. Um, so that one was junk. I think this is why Ralph crashed, because DRV errors in the TI chip. Um, what do we got? So, carbon fiber fits good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's talk about alignment. Doesn't really fit the best. Motors torquing in a little bit, so it rubs pretty decently on the inside wheel. That could be fixed by taking this pinion and putting it in, but I think it's more of a perpendicular belt to motor issue. Uh, same on this side. I shortened the hell out of these wires. I don't know why they were going up and around. I mean, how much did I shorten them? This much. So maybe that was a look, whatever, not my thing. Got rid of those. Uh, it's a comfortable board to stand on. A little thin for my liking. But big guy like me, that's why I moved the battery tray back. Definitely feels a little bit better than my LaCroix, which if I stand the same way I just did, my feet hit the tires during turns. Frankie. Um the idle pulleys, they're 3D printed, and, you know, they work, they're light, uh, it's great, but, God, could you get a spacer in your life, and a bandsaw, or print some spacers, no, please don't print spacers for this, but there's seven or eight washers behind each of these, not a big fan of that, I do love how you can carry this from the rear. And throw it on your back. Very comfy that way. All in all, good board. It does hit the ground. But when do you ride like that? Never. Like this, still hits the ground. I'm 250 pounds, so you can't really judge me for that. Um, so, Inside you have two Flipski Vesks. You have a Flipski Bluetooth and you have a Flipski remote. All that was working fine. I think the cutoffs were due to a bad DRV chip or he's just bad at programming a vest tool or whatever tool he was using and was asking too many amps from the motor and they were shutting off due to uh, overcurrent of 50 amps. Uh, pretty common on these little shitty ones. Um, so, I'm going to throw a extra Unity in there for some dual Fox boxes and maybe run this board. Maybe get some new trucks and make sure not to 
look at it wrong and bend them. But all in all, that's my take on this. Um, I did take off the extra top battery pack. That's why there's holes right here. Which is right here. So now I have a Samsung 20R 10 series 4 parallel that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Um, just carbon fiber tape. No guys, it's not carbon fiber. So, yeah, I don't even want to open this up and see what type of uh, mill. I don't want to see what's inside of that. I'll be completely honest. Um, yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, where is it? So, if you want an idea on how you should be doing cells, this is how Cali does it. The flexible flexibility is in the braid right here. You just manufacture your own PCBs, you upload a gerber file, they'll print this out, you can put your own name on it. Then you can, if you really still feel like soldering it, you can do that, but spot weld please, buddy. Please spot weld. Right, Frankie? Baby?